Welcome to the Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and thanks again for joining us on the broadcast or podcast. Today's episode is going to track with two persistent and poignant themes in all of the My Utmost for His Highest devotional, being perfectly consistent with these truths in Scripture, the Lordship of Christ and our relationship with God through Him. We can have this relationship in no other way, and Christ gave the gave his all for us to be able to be saved and enter into that relationship. But it is only on his terms because he knows that everything else will end in failure, destruction, and death. That's why the first couple of episodes in this week's lineup were so powerful and so absolutely necessary. Time with God, solitude with God, and hearing his call and the nature of his voice as he calls within us by grace through faith in Christ. It's not just about being saved by grace through faith. It's literally being set apart and sanctified and becoming a disciple and maturing and growing. It's all by grace through faith. Now, you can find uh, all of these podcasts, videos, and articles related to these at loveandlordship.com. When you go there, the homepage has uh, read, uh, uh, listen and um, watch. I- I'm sorry, I got confused there a minute. Read, listen, and watch, and you can find videos and podcasts and articles about all of these. Go to the Podbean um, icon near the bottom of the homepage or the Vimeo one, and you can specifically find all these Authority of Love and others. And I pray that you uh, uh, may avail yourself of those and then share them with others. Thank you for those who have done that and for the feedback and the comments that we get. Uh, I certainly appreciate the encouragement and even the disagreements and challenges from time to time. That's okay. Uh, we're, we can do that and do it in love. If you want to contact me, you can do that at loveandlordship at gmail.com, loveandlordship at gmail.com. As I mentioned in the, in the short intro before that, today's message focuses on Christ's lordship and our relationship with God because of Christ and in him. What does that look like? And what do we need to be aware of as the enemy uses our own flesh and the culture and its debased and deceptive messages, as well as the evil rulers in the spiritual realm, to keep us from walking with Christ as Lord in the relationship, the very relationship that he died to freely give us? We have to be very careful that we are truly his in spirit and not masquerading in fleshly service and activity that becomes an idol replacing him. With that said, we pick up with the first of today's messages entitled from January 18th in the book, or as you follow on myutmost.org, It is the Lord. I think you'll recognize the name and the circumstance in this scripture focus. From John 20, 28, this is after Jesus has been resurrected from the dead and is walking among and and reveals himself to over 500 witnesses several times to his disciples. John 20, 28, Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Another verse, Chamber starts out with this, give me to drink. Because he uses that to say this, how many of us are set upon Jesus Christ slaking, an old English word, or satisfying our thirst when we ought to be satisfying him. We should be pouring out now, spending to the last limit, not drawing on him to satisfy us. You shall be witnesses unto me. That's Acts 1.8. That means a life of unsullied, uncompromising, and unbribed devotion to the Lord Jesus, a satisfaction to him wherever he places us. This is exactly what it means to be saved and sanctified, living for Christ. Check out Luke 14, 25 through 35, and Christ's own words on the conditions for discipleship under his lordship. Number one, one must be absolutely, I'm sorry, he must be absolutely first over any and everything, over everyone else. Number two, we must be wholehearted in our devotion. Half-hearted devotion makes us and our faith a joke. Check it out in the text yourself and in our churches and the culture around us. We're a laughingstock in many cases because we've not given that wholehearted devotion. And number three, we must deny or die to ourselves and bear the cross that he has for us. 
if we're a fa- if we are failing to walk in in and work toward our relationship with him along these lines he says this we cannot be his disciple there's a great text in the old testament that the spirit laid on my mind as i was reading through this as well properly interpreted shines a light on this type of life for god found in psalm 9017 where the psalmist states this may the favor some translations rightly interpret this word as beauty giving us some great insight on this. May the favor or beauty of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the works of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. In other words, if we are living wholeheartedly for God in Christ, no matter what we receive or face, and oftentimes we think as favor, we'll never face anything bad and we have all we want. That's why this word beauty is an even better interpretation to help us understand it. You see, no matter what we receive or face, good, bad, or ugly, because we act in his favor, they will see his beauty and maybe even more so in adversity than in prosperity. The devotional continues, Beware of anything that competes with loyalty to Jesus Christ. The greatest competitor of devotion to Jesus, listen to this, the greatest competitor of devotion to Jesus is service for him. It is easier to serve than to be drunk to the dregs. The one aim of the call of God is the satisfaction of God, not a call to do something for him. We are not sent to battle for God, but to be used by God in his battlings. Are we being more devoted to service than to Jesus Christ himself? Folks, that is a very powerful and a present-day applicable question in our churches. That doesn't mean we shouldn't be serving, but when that becomes our focal point, it becomes an idol. And having said that, it's a great segue into the second devotional for day and the second part of our message and episode in today's broadcast. It's entitled, Are You Fresh for Everything? from January the 20th in the devotional or on myutmost.org. John 3, 3, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. Nicodemus is wanting to know more about Jesus and says, you're a great teacher and all these things. And Jesus cuts to the chase and says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, before I launch into the, this portion of today's message, I have to warn you that it might sting a little bit, as it did or does for me from time to time, Okay. So strap in and be ready for this first statement from Chambers in today's devotional and in this message. Sometimes we are fresh for a prayer meeting, but not fresh for cleaning boots. Ooh, ouch. Being born again of the Spirit is an unmistakable work of God by grace through faith in Christ, as mysterious as the wind, as surprising as God himself. We do not know where it begins. It is hidden away. We know when we can open ourselves to that. But he says, it is hidden away in the depths of our personal life. Being born again from above is a perennial, perpetual, and eternal beginning. A freshness all the time in thinking and in talking and in living. The continual surprise of the life of God. That is if Christ has truly become Lord of our life. Staleness is an indication of something out of joint with God. I must do this thing or it will never be done. That, Chambers says, is the first sign of staleness. Are we freshly born this minute or are we stale, raking in our minds for something to do for him? Freshness does not come from obedience but from the Holy Spirit. Obedience keeps us in the light as God is in the light. Let me rephrase that. If we keep at the source, i.e. the Holy Spirit, we will remain fresh and focused on God and His truths. This keeps us in the light as we obediently then follow through based on these truths, His Word. Listen to how we make this happen, Chambers says. Guard jealously, what we've been talking about the last two days, right? Guard jealously your relationship to God. I mean the previous two days, Monday and Tuesday of this week. Guard jealously your relationship to God. Jesus prayed, this is John 17, the high priestly prayer or prayer of unity, 
that they may be one even as we are one. I believe it's in John 17, 21. Nothing between us. Keep all the life perennially open to Jesus Christ, perpetually, constantly, continually open to Jesus Christ. Don't pretend with him. Are you, are you drawing your life from any source other than God himself? If you are depending upon anything but him, you will never know when he is gone because you'll keep serving or giving or attending and never know whether it really you really are walking with him. You've got to be walking with him and let the attending and giving and serving be an overflow of that relationship. The scriptural reference here, I'm, I'm stating this, reiterates how this happens. How we stay at the source, the Holy Spirit, so that his life-giving presence is always flowing in and through us in everything we do. John 7, 38, out of him who believes will flow streams of living waters, the Holy Spirit. We often claim belief, but never stop to check and see if what flows in and through us is actually bringing life to others. Service without the Spirit is lifeless echoing what Chambers is getting at in this fresh for everything question directed to us. And he closes here. Being born of the Spirit means much more than we generally take it to mean. It gives us a new vision and keeps us absolutely fresh for everything by the perennial, continual supply of the life of God. Here's our food for thought today. Are you signing up for every service you can because your church has called you to do so? Let me ask you this, how's that affecting your actual relationship with God? How about with your spouse, your children, with others? This is not be fresh for everything, but it is getting worn out in your flesh all in the name of Jesus. But are you spending time to develop that personal relationship with him first? If you do, the overflow of the Holy Spirit will be inevitable and you won't have to worry about what's getting done or what's being impacted because by faith, you know that streams of living water are flowing through you and he is influencing all you touch for his kingdom and glory, fresh for everything. Here's our love and action items. Spend time with God, his word, prayer, and listening every day and begin with the scriptures in this message. Number two, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Number three, take an inventory of your Christian service and how it's impacting your time with the Lord himself. How about how it's impacting those closest to you? Which consumes your time and thinking? Is it all service and getting things done? Or does it include and prioritize getting to know him and him working through you? And then number four, Based on this inventory, what needs to change for your priorities to be in line with his word and for your faith and life to be a stream of living water for all those that are in your life? Tomorrow we close out the week with another Family Foundation Friday with David Walls as we get his take on the General Assembly session. Be sure to join us, invite family, friends, loved ones, and enemies, and uh, as, as we all need to hear this. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day and God bless in Christ. And as always, I want to promote following right after this is my good friend Bill Reeser and Encounter. And at 1245, my longtime best friend Greg Horn and Hope is here. I'm Greg Williams. And as always, I thank you for listening to the authority of love.